Seneca Falls. Oh, how was the drive? Very icy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the last bit. Everybody socially distant? Hold on to it for a little while. I miss you go out in the street and grab them and bring them in. <laughs> you know, really, yeah, with another one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I say that every Sunday because sometimes we need to be reminded that each day is a gift, even when it's cold and icy out. 
It's still a gift. The sun is still shining behind the clouds, and it's starting to peek through. So we remember the gift that today is, because each and every day is a gift from God, a day where we have an opportunity to sometimes just start things over, to reset things, to embrace this idea of love and peace and epiphany. Uh, Today we will be celebrating Epiphany. We're a little late on the game. And after service, we may try to take down the greens. We'll see how uh, uh, how many hands we have. If not, we'll keep Christmas around as long as we need to. Uh, But we are thankful for uh, you joining us in worship, either here or online. Uh, Just a a few announcements. We will be having a congregational meeting at the end of the month, January 30th. This will be our annual congregational meeting. We will also install our church officers. Uh, Session meeting has been moved to January 17th. It's going to be a week later. I have some training to do uh, for Monday and Tuesday of this week. And uh, uh, just another announcement, the Spain funeral will be on Tuesday at 11, Tuesday the 11th at 11 here at the church. Are there any other announcements this morning? Yes, Jenna. Yes, worship committee, uh, uh, yes, worship uh, 14th at 5 here at the church or, or on Zoom? Here at home. Both. Okay, great. Are there any other announcements this morning? Let us calm the world around us. Let us bask in the beauty of the Lord as we listen to the music from our prelude. morning. Will you join me in the call to worship? Arise, shine, for your light has come. The Lord has risen upon us. Come, worship the Lord of glory. Proclaim God's praise among the nations. 
Our first hymn is number 701, Sanctuary. Our first lesson this morning is Psalm 72, 1 through 7, and 10 through 14. I haven't seen this before, so um, please forgive me if I stumble a bit. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures, and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all the kings fall down before him. All nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. Now please join me in the call to reconciliation. Hold just a second. Uh, in the light of Christ, we see shadows of our world and of our hearts. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Now join me in the prayer of reconciliation. Merciful God, you have given light to the world in Jesus Christ, but we have preferred to live in darkness. Your justice protects the weak and the distressed, yet we seek the shelter of privilege and power. Your righteousness redeems the poor and the needy, yet we seek the status of wealth and possessions. Your peace upholds the oppressed and the defenseless, yet we seek the security of weapons and retribution. Forgive us our sins and lead us to true repentance that we may trust you in all things. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Let us take a moment for our own silent personal confession. Amen. My dear friends, there has been a star in the sky and its light has shone upon the world and the light has come into the world. In Jesus Christ, our Savior, God was manifest as one of us so that we may know we are God's precious 
children. The life, the death, the resurrection of Christ lets you know your sins are forgiven. Be at peace. Amen. Because God has forgiven us, we forgive one another. We welcome each other with the peace of Jesus Christ, saying the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Please share the peace of Christ with each other. Now, I, I normally have a really good children's sermon for Epiphany. Uh, uh, okay, okay. So, yeah, okay, me and Steve will talk. Okay, uh, okay. So, we have those three gifts. We have gold and Frankenstein. You see, that always works better with kids. And, I, and then I say, but wait for it, there's myrrh. My kids hate this children's sermon, just so everybody knows. But they're good, good, good. Uh, uh, we, we, we have these gifts that come to us that, that, that are brought that show us that Jesus is somebody special that announces to the world this idea of lordship of Christ. So there's also a gift that we'll talk about later that we bring, that we can take to Jesus. What I always like to think about that we can bring are those ideas of friendship and care and love for one another. That's a gift that we have within us that doesn't cost us anything other than maybe our time and our care and our commitment. Those things that we don't have to pay for. But we can bring those and we can bring them to Jesus and we do that by sharing them with each other. So will you pray with me? Let us pray. Dear God, we give thanks for Jesus Christ. Let us bring love, peace, and hope as we pray and as we play. Amen. Thanks. I always wanted to do that. Now we have the Old Testament lesson. Isaiah 60, 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant 
your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Now we'll have an anthem. And now we have the New Testament lessons from Ephesians 3, 1 through 12. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I wrote above in a few words a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles prophets by the, and prophets by the, sea, by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given, by, given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what it is what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places this was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our lord in whom we have access to God and boldness and confidence through faith in him.
Let us pray. Lord of all, let us once again see Jesus Christ as our ruler. Let us not be confused by the world around us that shifts our focus from things of the earth, that shifts our focus from you. Let us celebrate your presence among us. Amen. Our gospel reading today closes out the Christmas season. We go back to the beginning of the second chapter of Mark, of Matthew, of Matthew, to hear the story of those who came to see Jesus. Let us hear the gospel as it is found in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise people came from the east. Wise people from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child that has been born, the king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling all the chief priests and the scribes and of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. So it was written by the prophet, and to you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, you are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is the shepherd, my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise people and learned from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go to him and worship. When they had heard the king, they sent out. And there ahead of them went the star and that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and they worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they brought him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This will be the last time I say this for a little while, but Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And I know I'm extending the season just a little. Thursday was one of those holy days we all too often look over, especially after the anniversary that will now be brought up for years to come on January 6th. But we've tried to condense Christmas into a day, and we place those events of epiphany there at the manger. We've had our wise men slowly make their way up to the table today. But Epiphany marks the end of the season of Christmas, a time for, re for revelation. It's a time to take a moment to celebrate the awesomeness of God with us, the greatness of the incarnation. It's one of those days that we really don't talk a lot about, though. Matthew is the only one that gives us the account and its placement in the gospel has led to the idea that the events happened right after that night that Jesus was born. Right as Mary was pondering those things in her heart, maybe those wise men, or how we call them, showed up. We heard the tradition that calls them wise men or kings. I mean, during this time, they would not have been alone. There would have been a caravan that probably would have came with them. There would have been men and women both. There. I've always seen the joke that you know that they were men because they had to, they wandered around and they went to the wrong place before they showed up at Bethlehem, whereas a woman would have just went to where they were supposed to go. And that it took them two years. The better term is probably magi. 
We don't know how many there were. I mean, we assume three because that was the gifts they bring. But they have a stature. We know that. There's something different about these people. More than likely, the idea is that they were believers in Zoroastrianism, which was an early monotheistic religion, probably from the area of Persia. I mean, this religion is kind of seen as a precursor of what we would know now as Islam. I mean, after it's been mixed with some of that early Judean stuff as well. This story is important because it sets up the gospel the way Matthew wants to tell it. Today we have a story, and I worry if we rush through it, it just becomes that extra decoration on our nativity. And when we focus, we just talk about the gifts maybe, and we miss out on the story that Matthew wants to tell. Matthew wants us to know from the beginning that Jesus is going to be at odds with the rest of the world. That's what the story is really setting up. Matthew is wanting us to know that the Messiah, the Savior that's being announced to the nation, is going to have some troubles. And epiphany is important in knowing that. This familiar story is rife with conflict. We have foreigners. They're the first dignitaries to pay homage to worship the new ruler. And they have a problem. They go to the wrong place. The star, we're told, is positioned over Bethlehem. They go to Jerusalem because they think, you know, something got screwed up. If there's a ruler, it's Jerusalem. That's where they're supposed to be because surely the new king is in the center of the power. And the problems continue. They meet with Herod. They give this good news of the gospel to this despot this Roman puppet, puppet that's placed in power and he's worried about the legitimacy of the throne he's on and he's worried and he's scared that there may be somebody with some kind of prospect or some kind of religious prospect or claim, a rightful claim that has been announced in the heavens. And this leads to the terror that is the rest of the second chapter of Matthew the night that's not silent, when the innocents are slaughtered. Because when a despot gets nervous that they could lose their power, people die. We see that play out time and time again. There is terror and tension that accompanies the arrival of God among us. Because that's what happens when God breaks in to the world. The Magi have come to a realization that the Messiah is here and that the world has changed. We can't overlook and forget the radical nature of the incarnation. This realization, this epiphany that God is with us, of the Messiah being manifest to the nations is shown in these majestic gifts that they bring. The gold, the frankincense, the myrrh, they're gifts for royalty. And they're more. They're gifts that announce this idea of goodness and greatness of Christ, but also that there's going to be some struggle. That also there's going to be some suffering. There's this idea of power and pain mixed together. Glory and suffering come with the announcement of these gifts that the wise people bring. They bring one other thing to Bethlehem. The gift that you and I carry as well. The most important gift. They bring worship. They come to worship the true ruler. And they pass by the powers of the world. Their worship acknowledges that they themselves are not the center of existence. That the ideas of power, that the ideas of even wealth 
are not the center of existence. And that causes some problems. That leads to that anger that Herod has. Because the last thing that the rulers like Herod want or that idea that they are not the center of existence. But it's this announcement of Jesus' lordship in our world. The true epiphany, along with that gold and frankincense and myrrh, is worship, the great and good worship. Bowing down to the Lord, knowing that there's something greater in the world around them. This holy gift goes beyond seeing Christ as a leader in our world and seeing Christ as God. As God among us. As a God that's going to need help for that gold will be used so they can escape. So they can become refugees and try to find a safe place for a little while. We don't hear a lot about what happens for the next 30-ish years in Christ's life. But this gold, this frankincense, and myrrh, it's kind of set them up for being able to grow and live and maybe even have a little bit of comfort for some time. Definitely to have safety. And they bring it with this idea of worship. This idea of this is what I have that I can give God. That's the gift that we carry. My friends, we're blessed to be travelers in God's world. We're blessed that we've seen the signs in the heaven that we've been shown the way to Bethlehem. God has called each of us to take this trip so that you can take part in revealing the Messiah to the nations. The gift you bring with you is your worship. Worship in that idea of praising God when you come to church. Worship in that idea of caring for your neighbor. Worship in that idea that we have this great thing called community where we can share in our lives with each other and we can make this place better. that we can work to right the wrongs, that we can have this idea of justice that may flow like a never-ending stream, that can roll down from the mountains, and we can do better. That's what worship is. Worship is more than just the singing of hymns. It's that idea that believing that God is good, yes, all the time, and that we, we have the chance to take part in it. We have the chance to share love, hope, and peace in this guy in this world. It's believing that we are not in charge, that we've been created, that there's something bigger than this world that we see around us. And this worship frees us. It liberates us from the sin and the pull of the world around us. This worship opens our heart to our neighbor as ourself. It shows us that true power is not in revenge and war, but peace and grace and forgiveness. That worship is not, worship shows us that it's not in what we have, but it's in what we can give. That's the epiphany. Is that everybody has something they can give. We can all worship. We can all have a relationship with our Lord and with each other. So let us come and worship the Lord. Amen. Our hymn of response today is We Three Kings of Orient Are.
concerns and we give them to God. As we begin, let us remember those we hold in prayer. Are there concerns to be lifted up this morning? We continue to pray for the Spain family as they mourn the loss of John, and we hope that they are able to have their, their, their moments of, of grief and celebration in the week to come. Uh, we ask for prayers for our health care workers who are tired, who have been tired for a long time and have more work to do. Uh, we give thanks for those that are out cleaning our streets today and will be working for us throughout the week and the rest of the season. Uh, I ask for uh, continued prayers for uh, my friend Mike Masters. He's uh, suffered a stroke uh, at the age of 46, a fairly major stroke. He's making improvements, though. So uh, we get daily updates from his wife, Reverend uh, Leanne Masters in Nebraska, and uh, uh, making good improvements. So we remember that as we go on. Are there any others to announce today? Prayers for, for uh, Fiend Beck. Uh, Fiend's daughter, uh, Charlotte, is, uh, has terminal cancer. Uh, she's been living with, with, with Charlotte. Uh, she's, uh, last I heard, in the hospital at Upstate in Syracuse. Uh, um, hope, and I believe one of the other daughters is coming to, to care for Fiend. So prayers for uh, Charlotte and her family, and most certainly prayers for Fiend. Uh, as the as they face another time of trial. We take all this with us. As we approach this table, sometimes doing well, sometimes hurt and broken. Because this table is big enough for everybody. At this table, we have a place where we can be called welcome. Where we can find hope. Because there's nothing that can, there's nothing that has, there's nothing that will separate us from the love of God. <coughs> so we come to the Lord in prayer. God of love and peace and power, we give thanks for this world that you have placed around us, that you have called us to be stewards of. We give thanks for the beauty that we see each season. For the snow as it falls. beauty that we can see when the snow will melt and the flowers will rise to the warmth of your sun to when the leaves will change and we start all over again. God, let us never take for granted the beauty that shows up in your world every day. God, we give thanks that we have a place to come and to worship. We give thanks for your church here in this building, your church universal. That idea that we are connected through time and space and love and peace and family and community. That we share one God, one Lord of all. And we come to one table. Sometimes we march happily, sometimes we crawl in pain but we come knowing that you have called us. Lord, fill us with your spirit as we take the bread and the cup. We remember the pain and the glory of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've began the gospel, and we will go to where it ends here at the table. Right before Christ was betrayed, he shared in the Passover with his disciples. And he said, I have done this 
so many times. And I've always been told, write something down because there will be a day that you forget this. So now at the maybe hundredth time that I've done this, I, I will try this again. So Christ took bread at the supper and he gave thanks to God and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he would take the cup and he would say, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, do this in remembrance of me. We go through this holy meal because Christ has told us to. We do it because we proclaim the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ until Christ comes again. For as long as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we realize that Christ has died, and Christ is resurrected, and Christ is with us now and forever. My friends, the table is set. I hope and I pray that you have had a chance to gather your elements. Uh, take off one layer, take the bread, and then we have the second layer as well for all who would like to partake in communion. If you need some, please raise your hand and we will bring some to you. Let us pray. God of glory and power and might, we give thanks that through this bread and this cup we are connected and grafted to Christ. That through communion we are fed, we are lifted up to your presence. We are strengthened to carry on, to proclaim the gospel, the good news that Christ is Lord and that love is the greatest thing that can ever be known. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our offering will still be located for the coming weeks there at either entrance or exit. Uh, we give thanks for all the gifts and let us hear our call to our offering. God intends to unite all creation so that we may share in the promises of God's new reign. Therefore, with gratitude and joy, let us render tributes and bring gifts. For we have access to God and boldness and confidence through faith in Christ.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Gracious God, you led the wise travelers to seek Jesus. Overjoyed in Christ's presence, they knelt and offered precious gifts. We too offer our gifts in gratitude, reverence, and thanksgiving for the birth of your child. Receive and bless this offering as a joyful sign of the Son. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 727, Will You Be My Servant? Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? The love and the care that you share with each other, that worship you bring, do not leave it here. Take it with you out into God's world. Go in peace and may the face of God shine upon you. May you know the greatest thing in the world, which is the love of Jesus Christ. May you be connected one to another through the perfect Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.